I never forget, actually, this part coming up right here. That's where I had my first fight. I never forget, the kid hit me and ran. My tooth was shaking, and he knocked my tooth out. It was already up. And, and he ran, I couldn't catch him. And I was, I cried for like a day. I think Adonis is a guy that takes a lot of pride in where he's from and representing Miami. There's so many people that have an uh, affinity for him because of his personality, his character, his work ethic, what he represents. I think he has so many people that are proud of what he's been able to do and the way he's represented this area. This is where I first started playing basketball, you know, right behind my grandmother's house, me and my cousins. We all started playing right here. And this is where, I, you know, I got, you know, that fight, that drive, because nothing was easy with no fouls. You know I mean, we, we would push each other down. I mean, sometimes basketball would turn into football. And as, I, as you get over here with the older guys, uh, you have guys that want to play next who ref the game ahead of them. So, you know, guy wants to get the game over with, he wants to play next, he won't call any fouls. I'll be honest with you, when I first started playing, I never had dreams of taking it to where the, the level that I'm at now. Playing here, growing up in, in the environment, you know, not getting any fouls called, always playing with older kids, um, a little bit of my mom and, and those things. You know, that's probably where most of the toughness came from and, um, you know, God rest her soul, my mother, before she passed away, was a very tough woman, probably the toughest, not even just woman, but individual that I've ever met in my life. You know, bouncing back from a drug addiction and, and homelessness and all the things that she had went through to come around and, and to be at peace, you know, with her life, to clean herself up, to turn her life over to God. You know, it says a lot because a lot of people, when they go to, to the drugs and they go to the homelessness and the different things like that, they never return from those places. You know, they kind of get stuck in that life and, and that's the end for them. For her, that was kind of like, you know, the beginning. It really much kick-started her to turn her life around and it really jump-started our relationship because our relationship had really been broken for many of years because of those things. And before she passed away, we had mended our relationship. We had, you know, spent almost every day together for the last, you know, two, three years. Coach Donovan was the first guy I saw when I walked into the funeral home. It was hard for me to actually attend the viewing of the body. And the only reason I did attend because Coach Donovan and Coach you know, Grant and those guys were here. I don't think if it was for those guys, I would have been I would have been strong enough to actually attend the viewing of the body. So we did it in Liberty City, and it was great just to see Coach Riley and, and everybody that had never probably really experienced that part of Miami to come and, and be a part of you know my Miami. Um, just all because of the support of me. And like I said, those are the things you can't put a price tag on. And when people talk about leaving and going somewhere for more money, it doesn't equate to Pat Riley, you know, coming in Liberty City at 10 o'clock at night you know, to be with me because I lost my mother. You know, that doesn't happen. In the history of Miami athletics, you will not find a man who financially has given up more to be here than that man because it's not just one contract where he gave up millions of dollars it was two i think the, the total number is 24 million dollars that he could he had offers like that's not some figure that that is abstract he had offers worth 24 million dollars than the ones he accepted to be here in miami and i've had opportunities to leave for more money and um green on the other side you know this is where my roots are you know this is where my family you know friends uh you know things that you can't buy uh with money are all here he wanted to be 305, this area code matters to him. He wanted to play for his neighbors, for his family members, for the people who supported him, for the people who helped raise him, for the people who helped get him out of a bad circumstance. There's certain guys that play the game and do things for money and what the game brings them. And then there's certain guys that play the game because they love the game, they love where they're from. The things that make me happy, you know, money, cars, those things don't make me happy. It's giving back, you know, making kids smile, giving something to, to a kid when I do my back to school or, or when I do my Thanksgiving or, or, or when I do my Christmas giveaway. You know, those are the things that, uh, you know, I really get, you know, joy out of. If I do got one soft spot, it is for kids. <laughs> um, and I really love kids. I love 
being around them. I love their energy, you know, their innocence. The thing about these kids, is, and, and I even suffer from it, is that they don't know anything outside of Miami, you know. I, I never traveled across the bridge to South Beach until I was signed to play with the Miami Heat. These kids only know what they see every day. They don't know it's another world outside of Miami. They don't know it's another world outside of Liberty City or Overtown or, or whatever, um, you know, part of Miami they're from. They only know what they see every day and they're a product of their environments. Um, as soon as these kids find out that there's something outside of this and, it, and it's achievable and, and they can get there, and then I think, you know, that's starting the process. Um, you know, you can't be with them every day. It's up to them to do the things necessary to get there, but you show them that it's possible and that, can, that it can be achieved. And that's what I just try to show these kids, that I came from the same circumstances, the same background, same issues, you know, nothing's different, nothing's changed. I think, you know, all these kids just need to continue to see us guys that are from this in the city, um, you know, continue to be around and continue to show these kids something positive that has come from, you know, these neighborhoods. For someone like Udonis to get out of Liberty City, and to become what he's become and still doing it for the Miami Heat in the city of Miami, he's got a chance to do some incredible things beyond basketball in terms of helping a lot of different people. Whatever I do when I'm done, you know, playing basketball, I want to affect, you know, this city, this community in a positive way. You know, I'm thankful and I'm blessed and, and um, you know, the man upstairs has showed me favor. Uh, but I mean, to me, there's no better place in the world. You know, I, I love this city, I love these people. And you know, this is somewhat you know, my strength to go out here and, and perform every night the way I do. Because I represent the city, you know, not just myself, I represent the city, I represent my family, I represent my friends. I got a lot of people that have a lot invested in me um, that depend on me to go out here and, and hold it down for my town and for my city. So you know, when I go out there, you know, my focus is I want my team to win, but I carry a lot on my shoulders when I step out on the floor, you know, as far as playing for the Miami Heat. You see right there, that's the Dolphin Stadium. Back then, when I was growing up, we called it Joe Robbie Stadium. They changed the name like five times. I'm not even sure what the name is now. <laughs> you know, obviously we didn't have the money or we couldn't afford to go to the games at that time. So we used to just watch the game on the big screen with binoculars. And we would sit on this wall and we'd be able to watch the games on these screens right here. I don't see kids do that nowadays. I don't know if that's, if we were just smarter than all the kids nowadays. But I don't, I don't see why kids, more kids don't sit on that wall and watch the game like we used to. Hey, wait, are you next on the heat, boy? All right. <laughs>